and welcome to the next episode of Oldhammer Reviews. Uh, I apologize for the delay. I've had an eventful few weeks, but I'm back with something very special. Uh, as I asked on Twitter, you wanted um, it to change between uh, 40k and fantasy, and I do have some smaller sets, but I figured let's start it off with a bang. So, 5th edition. The set I found rather cheap, actually. It's complete, although be warned, there isn't everything inside right now because a lot of the stuff uh, has been assembled by the previous owner and I, I don't know, I thought it would look not so good if it's all in there crammed together. But there is a bunch of spruce still. So, um, yeah, 5th edition. This was the second uh, fantasy starter set. Uh, they only started doing it at 4th. I actually got in this, uh, well not right now anymore, but when I bought it I got the 4th edition starter book as well. And yeah, this is the box. Of course it's a little less than you'd usually get, courtesy of the fact that most of it is uh, yeah, not there anymore. Uh, you can already see, there are a bunch of spruce. I will probably definitely make some more high quality pictures of them. So this is your standard Saurus Warriors crew. There were 20 Sauruses in this. <clears throat> and uh, th this is exactly the same sprue, I think, that you would get in the old uh, Saurus box, like the normal box set. So there are these guys. Then we have the most, <laughs> the infamous Bretonian Bowman. Uh, focus, please, there. Uh, you had 24 of these, I think. Yeah, 24. And I think we all know at least one of these sculpts because, as I've seen, it's what most companies of uh, what most companies that produce bigger terrain use as sort of scaling measurement. But yeah, it's also a very nice touch that come on, that some of them have the arrows here on the floor where you can just pick them up. That's something they would actually repeat for the Hunters, for the Empire later on. But, yeah. Okay, so there is more Bowman Spruce. We don't need to look at them anymore. Then, uh, let's move on to the little guys. The Skinks. They were just simple one-piece midges. I can see that one's broken here. But they were pretty fun. They actually hold up quite well, in my opinion. I mean, they do actually look a little bit more Saurus-y, a little less comical, I think, compared to the newer ones. Like, the new ones have more have bigger eyes and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe that's more realistic, but I actually think the old Skinks look a lot more... Not realistic, but look e more evil, I'd say. But, yeah. There's certainly not so much variety, I think, with these. Because... Yeah, I think it's only like two different sculpts that exist, which is a shame, but then again, that was the sort of case with almost all of these older sets that you basically just had one or two or three variants of each sculpt. So yeah, there is more of these guys. We also have another sprue of Saurus Warriors. And now to the big piece, I think you can already tell what it's going to be, it's of course the Bretonian Knights of the Realm. And these guys actually had a lot more variants, but then again, I think... Oh no, actually, they were also available separately. Like, this, these four sprues, I think, in one box. And you can see, they have very nice iconography. You also have a choice for a hat each time. So, either here with a lion or with an eagle. Or maybe here you have uh, the Lady of the Lake or, or a unicorn. Then here we have a dragon, I think. Yeah, it's a dragon. Or another scaly boy. <laughs> and lastly, you have antlers or a bull. Yeah, basically. So these are actually, I think, the most the, the most pieces of the units in here because most of them are just one or two pieces. But yeah, and these came also with the standard night uh, night horses. Here, 
I think that's pretty actually held up up till 8th edition. We could just buy them separately or some use them, so... These are, I'd say, very iconic. Although I'm not sure if they maybe changed it because I don't recall seeing the fake grass here. Then again, I wasn't really much around during Fantasy's lifespan, so... I need someone in the comments to tell me, or I will ask around and maybe put it on screen. And there is also the rest of it. I just, yeah, here. It's just a normal head, you know? Nothing too fancy. I thought the, the horse does look a little scared. <laughs> I don't know. And yeah, this is just the rest of the spruce. We have a bunch of bases in here. And, oh, uh, I think I didn't mention it. Uh, you get 12 Knights of the Realm in here, which is pretty good. And considering these are such, let's say, low quality and low piece count uh, Bretonian Knights of the Realm, you can actually pick them up rather cheaply nowadays. I think for like 20 bucks you get 8 Knight Knights of the Realm, which is very good if you want to build a Bretonian force in these days. Considering nowadays they basically have to sell your liver or, I don't know, sell your, sell your uh, kidney to just get some. So, I'd say this is a very good deal, especially picking up this box, it's just, it's surprising how cheap it is. Like, I get my box for, I think, 150 on, okay, well, it was the German equivalent of Craigslist, but uh, still, uh, comparatively to all the other old uh, starter boxes, like 4th edition or 6th uh, edition, that one was rather cheaply, and well, it's complete. Plus, as I said, uh, I got a fourth edition rule book with it, and yeah. And now, I think most people know these guys still because they were like everywhere. I think up till sixth edition, sixth edition, uh, 40k. Uh, well, the edition we don't speak of, and um, eighth edition, I think, of fantasy. These things were still in each starter box. I have a bunch from uh, Skull Pass and, and Black Reach. And now, I apologize, it's German, so you can't reread, but ba basically, that's just the core rulebook with a very nice artwork, which is, in my opinion, quite an intermediary between the like more goofy fantasy of 4th uh, edition and the more grim tone that would be 6th edition. So, that's very nice, although it's something I don't think they had in here. Uh, you did not have characters. I do remember in 4th edition they gave you Grom the Paunch and Eltharion, I think, as paper cutouts. Maybe they have that in here, I'm not quite sure. I haven't fully looked into it, so sorry for that, but... Uh, yeah, at least these two characters in the front, I don't think are in there, in this. Also, I'm not sure who he is. I think maybe the precursor to Koenu or something, I don't know his name, the, the, the Bretonian High King. Like, and, yeah, you can see, uh, there is quite some colorful art, some colorful army picks. And, of course, some cool artwork. Oh, and of course, by the good old Rick Priestley, and illustrations by David Gallagher, Wayne England, Mark Gibbons, and Jeff Taylor. And well, those are just the, the other one is just the translations. Oh, it's also a nice piece, Undead vs. Dwarfs. Which is very nice, with the very old uh, Skeleton Warriors that I think would got actually replaced in 5th edition then. But yeah. And here you basically have the whole. All of the rules. You also have a bunch of color sections uh, for each of the armies with some beautiful, beautiful artworks. We're here with the old screaming bell. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Um, ah, the. I think it's the old Lama Sue? Or is it the only one that's gonna. Oh no, it's a, ah, it's a giant Taurus. Okay. Did not read that. Should have read it. But yeah, here's all the old Chaos Ball stuff. That's when they still existed. I. I think they stopped existing after this edition? Maybe they lived on for one more, but yeah, I do not recall them being in the 6th edition. There's also back when it was just uh, undead, so 
you basically had your vampire counts, your tomb kings, all mixed in one, with more generic undead. But uh, yeah, if you're curious about that, then Snipe and Whip made a Codex compliant video about the Codex undead. Well, not Codex, Army Book undead, but it's very much recommended. I'll probably link it uh, somewhere on the screen. This is something you don't get nowadays, mainly because we get the di digital age, but those are, yeah, basically, uh, translation is hard now, uh, it's basically where you could create your one on army lists. And we have like a whole bunch of these, and I actually, I'm actually quite lucky that none of the ones that were in here actually got uh, put, taken out, so this thing, completely original, nothing taken out, so that's great. Now to the rest, um, just, you can see we have a few dice in here, well, yeah, dice. I recently learned that it's only dice in plural, so yeah, they were not, nothing too special, your basic dice basically, but you had, uh, wait, there's another one. You had uh, two special dice for artillery, which I'm not sure actually uh, appeared in this in this box set as a unit. So this is actually pretty cool because you need this for anything else but this box. But they still give it to you as a starter. So very well done. Oh, careful. And oh, okay. Now I just realized it's not a fourth edition rulebook. I apologize. I've not seen this, and yeah, everything here is pretty messy. But this one apparently is also a rule book. But uh, I confused it for uh, the fourth edition basically because of this whole, yeah, because the artwork is what they had on the fourth edition starter set. So my bad for confusing it. But uh, apparently it's part of it. So I think the. Other one was a source book with some rules, but I think mainly the, the uh, what do you call it? the profiles of each character and army. And this one is your basic rule book with all the formations, rules for everything. Yeah, okay. My bad. I definitely did not prepare enough. I think, but yeah, it's nice though, and uh, it's confusing because yeah, it's a completely different artwork. Could be because, well, maybe not. Could be because that's the same they gave in the fourth edition and they didn't change too much. But I've never played, so I could not say. Here you got just a short, short introduction with a very Wayne England looking old slan. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Love it. And you just got your quick starter rules. For just a small game, you can also already see the here. Ah, there's also the assembly guide. As you can see it's rather simple. Bowmen and skinks are just one pieces. Swords are actually four pieces, and the knights are. I'm not going to count how much pieces there are. You can probably, but I don't. And here you also get um, a preview of the draw they gave you because. That's back when they still put uh, draw pieces in it. Not like in 3rd edition 40k, where they actually gave, like, gave you some plastic runes, but uh, it's paper runes, and from the looks of it, uh, they're still not carved out. So this is mostly OVP at some point, uh, to some degree. So you have just the uh, unit cards for a quick play, with, oh, they're a bit smaller, I think. Oh no, they just, they just cut up the units into two different units. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and here you get two to fill out yourself. So that's a good part. I mean, nowadays they already, they do it again, I think. They stopped doing it around like 6th edition fantasy and 4th uh, edition 40k, I think. But nowadays they give you uh, War Scroll cards again, at least for, for Age of Sigma. But I think also data cards for um, 40k. Here is just a reference sheet. So if you need something quick, and yeah, it's falling out already. But yeah, you have your damaged. You have a damage table. You have your hitting table. Mm. 
you have here the uh, all of the play rules, so we don't have to flick around in our book all the time like we do nowadays with our codices. There's a second one, I think, just for yeah, this one. This one is definitely out. I'm just gonna. This one is basically the same, I think. Just uh, so both players can have one. Then you have um, all the. Then you have all the. Uh, oh God, enchant uh, yeah, spells, I think. Another, another unit card and blast template. Also with a magic one. So, I'd say that's what it's for. And here you have. Oh no, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's not spells. It's um, magical gear, magical banner, magical armor, magical weapon, magical potion. So they actually had like equipment cards, which is neat. I'd say. Don't think we have that now, except for um, stratagems in 40k. And here you have your cardboard houses which are not assembled, so I'm gonna keep them that way and not gonna handle them around too much. Then we have more cardboard stuff with uh, what later would be in plastic, but here we have the flame template, a template for a fallen giant. I think these are meant to be cutouts for uh, the shields, maybe? I'm not sure. Maybe they're also meant to go on the houses, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, the shields they gave you are quite adequate enough. But uh, it's fun they gave you this, and I'm pretty sure you get it in 6th edition too, though I would need to look into it. But it's neat to have it, because the giant had this uh, fallen rule and the saber thing went for the classic old treeman, which... Uh, my friend J uh, Jewel Knight Jazz actually painted two of one is Dorthu, the other is just the standard tree lord. And you have more blast templates, also with magical side, of course. More windows, more shields, and what it looks like to me, yeah, it's wanted posters to put on the walls, which is nice. It's also written in French. Can we, if you can read that, have fun with it. And. Lastly, just more, yeah, just, just more for the houses. Ah, I think that one is for the tower. That one is for the stable, so it's all there. And yeah, the rest in here is just some dirt, some bases, some shields. Okay, now things are back together, but I'm going to move back to my desk and just show you uh, the sculpts from up close. Because uh, as much as you've seen on the sprue, I'm going to take some of the assembled models, clean them up just a little, maybe not strip paint them, but uh, paint strip them. But at least make sure that there aren't too heavy mold lines, or at least that it's not too heavily painted, because sometimes you can't see the stuff. And then I'm going to do my rating. But uh, till then, let me just pack it all up again and move. Well, I'm back. As you can tell from my horrible nail polish, it's been a while, so I did not immediately move over and do my stuff, so that was a lie. But, 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 well, I lied again, actually, because I did not strip the paint. Instead, I actually cut out four miniatures so I could make a more proper review and yeah so let's start with the smallest and move over to the biggest first we got our precious precious little skink boy as you can see it has the I'd say cla no not classic but a rather common monopose pose. Yeah, okay, that was very, very smart of you, Aurelia. Very smart, very smart. But yeah, you can see he has this uh, striding forward pose. I'm pretty sure I actually used the wrong base for this one, and you should use the uh, diagonally sl slotted ones. But, uh, well, it's it happened now. It's 
it would be hard to remove it, so I might just go all out with it, and they just stand diagonally like that. But whatever. So yeah, you can see uh, it's actually pretty good quality. I mean, obviously, if you look at it directly from the front, you can see the smaller issues, like with his with his packs. Yeah, his packs. <laughs> Apologies, uh, just. The cat made some issues. And you can see it's good. he's got a, well, a quiver. Yeah, a quiver is trapped to his back with a bow. And it's, it's very basic, I'd say, actually, for an archer. Though it should be noted that I think skinks were only archer units, actually, back then. I think now they also have spears and the like. I don't, I don't know. I don't, pl I don't play Lizard Man slash Seraphon, so you'd have to tell me, but yeah, uh, they were uh, a ranged unit only. I think they also were the only ranged unit aside from Chameleons, though I think they were introduced a few editions later, so yeah, back then they were, I think, the only ranged option except for uh, bigger cavalries, which also held skinks with both, so yeah, the skink was your classic archer for the Little man, and well, I guess he's doing a good job. I'm not sure how good they were. I think they were more of a like throwaway ranged unit, which you basically just like played in mass and just used it to harass uh, the enemy, but actually relied on this this chunky boy, which is uh, just amazing, in my opinion. Also, just it looks so much like the current ones. Like, so alien towards it. I mean, you, you can see his, the pose is like the whole hunched over hunched over posture you have with the, with the previous orc sculpts. Yes, they're previous now because we have seen what the new ones look like. They actually have a neck. But uh, it looks great. Um, they actually have a nice texture on the scale plates, I think. I'm not sure, horn plates or something. Also, you have... This cute, cute slan on the shield. It's not on every shield, but on this one, and I just, I just love it. Like, this one alone would probably warrant a bonus point in Old Hammerness in the final rating. I know it's, as I said, Old Hammerness is super subjec subjective, but this, this little, this little thing is just, ah, oh, it's beautiful. Also, I love the weapon. It actually more reminds me of a Skaven we weapon, because I think... Skaven had a similar one later on, but I think it would actually. Yeah, I think I think the weapon is actually more maybe more accurate to more indigenous tribes. I know it's in its dangerous territory. I'm not sure. I'm not gonna say it is, but it could be because it has this like you use uh, bones or uh, rocks and you tie them into the into the wood and use that as a weapon. I think that's at least something from the from the uh, caveman era that was used. But yeah, they, they also have different weapons, like actually uh, forged axes, and yeah, it's okay. But uh, the weapons are rather bland. Should be noted, this is not uh, Age of Sigma with all the... Hey, I must apologize. Uh, the cat has been doing shit again. I have now locked her out, so we can continue this a little bit more undisturbed. Uh, so, where was I? I okay, let's let's move on to the sculpt of the whole body. It's interesting, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, it looks similar to the current uh, sculpt, although a bit more akin to the orc sculpts. Uh, as you can see, with the whole hunched over, like missing neck. Also, I think, oh, they actually include the breathing hole, which is something I think both uh, lizards and amphibians have, reptiles and amphibians. So I'm not, I've, I may have had a biology, but I'm not 100% sure. So, yeah, but it's a nice touch. Uh, they also have the split tongue. And, oh, I remember where it was. About the weapons, this is not Age of Sigma, so you don't have the whole 
oh, when you have a weapon and there is like an imprint on it and it's all detailed and super, you know. It was 5th edition. It was rather basic. A sword was a sword. I mean, yeah, swords are swords still, but, you know, there was less detail on them and they were just made simply, or in this case, it's just like a, like a spiky wood. I don't know. But yeah, uh, great, great sculpt, actually. Probably would help hold up next to the newer counterparts. I sadly don't have one, and I'm not going to buy one now because of that. Because no, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't need to. I don't need more more miniatures. I have more than enough to review already. But yeah, this was the Littleman faction, and yeah, it was just these two sculpts. And same goes for the uh, Bretonians. And we'll start with the next bigger one, the Archer, and it's actually one with the with arrows on, uh, on the floor. And also, uh, I think that is the one that's mostly used as a scale. Or could it? Nah, okay, no, no. I, th I think it's actually... I think it's actually... Oh! Ugh. Come here. Come here! You little fuck. It's actually this guy with the helmet. I apologize again, because this time my phone just warned me that it's starting to overheat a little, so video quality might drop a bit. I'm sorry, but I do not have anything better right now to film with. But yeah, oh, and as you can see, yeah, I definitely did use the wrong base for uh, the the archers and the skinks, because the archers actually use the straight slotted ones and not the diagonally. Oh well, I will have to rectify that issue somehow. I mean, I probably have enough spares so I can cut this one away and replace it. But it's, yeah. Okay, but putting this one away. Mm, yeah, and I definitely should clean my desk. But yeah, you can see it's a, it also has a decent uh, facial sculpt. I mean, I guess the monopose did not allow for... <sighs> Come on, seriously? There. This one's it did not allow for such a well-detailed face. I mean, you can see it's a bit flattened out to the side where it's cast from. But it's okay, I'd say. With, with the right paint job, it wouldn't look too out of place. And aside from that, the whole sculpt is rather simpler, simple. I mean, you have just uh, clothes, so no armor with any details. Uh, you, have a, you, have, you have a pouch, you have a a knife, a little knife, yeah. I don't don't know what that is. Some sort of guard for against the arrows or something. I don't know. Maybe someone knows, but I don't. Uh, what's notable is that this guy doesn't have a quiver, quiver, but he has bow stuck in the ground. So I guess there's a missing detail because uh, I think. Oh no, 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 actually he doesn't miss it, but uh, he would have them stuck in his belt. As you can see. But yeah. This guy is okay. I mean it's a super simple sculpt. It's what you would expect for like a rank and file unit. And now we have the big centerpiece of well not centerpiece, but the bigger unit of this box, and it's the Knights of the Realm. I went for the uh for the ant uh, the guy with the antlers, uh yeah, this is, uh, I guess it's the best one since uh, the shield fitted with the helmet more closely. Then I think the others just didn't quite do it, but yeah. Um, well, there's not much to say about that. It's a simple knight. I mean, you can see it's actually not all that detailed too, except for the sabatons and, yeah, the leg a little. But aside from that, it's uh, all... Not low quality, but basic quality, I'd say. It's like a super basic knight sculpt. If you removed uh, the iconographies on the helmet and on the shield, it would be... Well, I'd say it wouldn't even look out of place in a historical game. And... yeah, I'm, I mean, I can't say too much about these guys, actually. It's... Yeah. Uh, what is no noble, though, is... They have uh, their their uh, saddle pieces actually sculpted onto them. So if you put them 
on here. Careful now. They actually should like appear as if they're on a saddle, but uh, this is a reoccurring issue, I think, with uh, mount uh, mounted models that they never quite actually fit onto their onto their horses. Like they always, I don't know, the legs are never spread out quite enough, and I don't know how they like kept repeating the mistake because I think that's even an issue in eighth edition with some of the sculpts that re they released. Like stuff like the skeleton cavalry worked perfectly, but human cavalry and not cav cavalry knights and all that, they just never seem to fit. It's bizarre. Maybe I should like cut away stuff, but I don't think it's the point that you have to cut away more from the miniature than you are supposed to actually. Like you don't have to cut anything away just to make it fit somewhere. It's like as if this was a, a resin model, actually, but in plastic. It's just weird. So yeah, the knight has a, uh, yeah, okay detail, it's rather simple. And the horses, I mean, they are probably supposed to be just simple horses because they were used in both Empire, uh, in, no, no, not only Empire and Bretonia, actually in Dogs of War 2, I think. Although there was a different uh, horse sculpt too without the cloth, I think, uh, a normal like uh wait what's it called um the pistol ear horse i think well at least i know it that the outriders the pistol ear outriders from the empire ha had these horses not these ones but uh, yeah they were basically used in almost uh all human armies i think some even were used as the chariot horses for chaos chariots in 5th edition Though that might just be mine that I got secondhand. So yeah, as you can see, it's it's a simple sculpt. It's uh, well, everything here is a simple sculpt. I should stop repeating myself. But uh, what's notable is the I call it I called it fake grass. Well, it's not fake technically, but like the sculpted grass that holds the horse in place. It's actually the last like last sculpt I actually saw that you used this because I know the skeleton horses um, do not have like a detailed uh, support they just have like a like a like a sprue bit that just holds them up it's totally flat there's no detail and you're usually cutting it away but they actually have like a bit something that would actually work into the base design if you did grass but uh, yeah that is all of the miniatures you get in the fifth edition starter set and now it's time for the rating, and the rating will be on all of these guys. Sorry. Because, uh, I mean, if I was going to do each unit separately, then the sculpt variety would be a 0 out of 10, because they are, well, a 1 out of 10 maybe, because you only have, like, two sculpts. These guys would maybe get a 3 or something, and also the quality would vary, and I think since it all is put together in one as one big old hammer, well, in this case, old hammer product, I'm just gonna judge them all together because uh, it just seems the most reasonable to me. So, um, the first one is the old hammerness, and I, as I said before, it's very subjective. And I told you, plus point for this little, for little shield guy, because this is just so fucking adorable. I'm so gonna make an imprint out of green stuff just so I can put this on some other models. But yeah. A bonus point from this guy, so this knocks the old Hammerness of 7. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with 7 mainly because uh, stuff like the Skings, uh, they look like they could just be in the new Hammer stuff. Um, the Knights just being a bit of a letdown, actually. Like, the same grace is both the Saurus uh, Warrior and the, the, uh, the Archer, because the, those actually radiate the whole old Hammer, old Hammerness, uh, Especially the guy with the shield and this guy just for nostalgia reasons because they are everywhere But yeah, uh, so the old terminus will be an 8 out of 10 plus one from the guy uh, Sculpt variety as you can expect is very low. So We're gonna go with a 2 out of 10 because as I said This and this guy they only have two different sculpts He has only two di two different weapons and two different shields. So also just two different sculpts, or you can mix and match the hats, the shield, and the 
weapons, but overall it's very little options. And the only big one is actually, yeah, this guy, because uh, they have four, uh, four different uh, helmets, uh, different shields, and no, eight different helmets. It's, it's a bit uh, more, but you also only have like the basic body. The only thing that changes is its helmet and uh, shield. And as for quality, um, this one's actually going to be more of a, of a okay quality set because uh, it's a 7 out of 10, basically. This guy is still very good quality. It's monopole still, but it would definitely not look out of place in a current army. This guy is also okay. Uh, he would look a little bit out of place basically just because of the, I'd say, more clumsy uh, connection of the arm and the head. Like, they look a little bit too much like they were put on. This guy would... It definitely still looks good on an army. He's a bit basic, but uh, he's got all the qualities needed. This guy... Uh, he's very basic quality. I mean, he definitely would look okay painted up in an army, but he looks so much out of place. And as I said, he has... And my uh, phone just overheated, and cut the video, so let's continue where we left off. Uh, I was talking about the face, it's, yeah, it's the flat face, as you can see, and not only that, it's just very generic sculpt with, uh, let's say, not that much detail, but it's still a good sculpt. Still, the quality is, yeah, overall, 7 out of 10, and that's the basic rating. Uh, thank you for watching, if you made it this far, because I know this video is long, I'm sorry, but I'm still sort of like, you know, uh, sort of trying to get the right flow and try to edit this a bit better. But still, if you watched till the end, uh, very thankful. Uh, let me know in the comments comments if you want to see a certain kit next. Next time is definitely going to be 40k again, so that is nice. and. Subscribe if you want to see more, or like if it was likable, and yeah, thank you. Have a, have a nice day, <laughs> and I'll be on.